Hi, this is Richard from Animate.com. In this third video on Blender's Shader Node Editor, we're having a closer look at the vector math nodes in order to produce a heat dissipation effect. We will use the math and vector math nodes in order to extract spatial information of the geometry, like angles and distances between objects. This will be necessary to dynamically change the gradients and fades of our heat dissipation effect. First, let's add Susan to get a more detailed mesh for that heat shading. Change the timeline area to the shader editor and add a material. Add an empty helper object which acts as a simple heat source. First, we will use a point like heat source and press Shift A and go to Mesh empty to add an empty object to your scene. Place this empty object in the location you want to act as the heat source. Press Shift A and go to Input Texture Coordinate and Shift A insert a Convert Vector Math node. That will give the length of a vector as we set its type to length. Connect the object output of the Texture Coordinate node to the vector input of the Vector Math node and set the object in the texture coordinates to the heat source empty. This gives the distance from our surface point to the empty object and we can use that value to define the color and intensity of heat. We can use a convert color ramp to set the color of the gradient and plug it into the emission color of the shader. Black color at the ramp position 1 will ensure that there is no glowing if the distance is bigger than 1. We can give this heat gradient some texture by adding a noise with a math node before we connect it to the color ramp. This looks good. What else? Apart from the distance between objects, we also can use spherical coordinate angles to map textures onto spherical objects. Let's add some ice looking at the heat source by adding a sphere and give it a damp track constraint. Select the empty as target object and set the set component as alignment axis. The ice north pole now is locked to the heat source. Select the eye again to set its shading. We add a new material to the eye. Using the texture coordinates node, we need convert separate XYZ node and connect the object or normal output. They are both the same for a sphere with radius 1. Add a color ramp and use the set component to color the white eyeball with the iris in pupil. That's good. Now, if we want to add a spherical texture for the iris, we first want to calculate the coordinates for that. We need the angle from the North Pole and the angle around the North Pole, rather than just X and Y coordinates. Add a Convert Math node and set its type to ArcTan2. That's the Arcus tangent for the ratio between X and Y, it calculates the angle between the two axes. So let's add a convert combine XYZ node to combine this angle and the set component we already used earlier. This is our vector for a texture, noise texture, so that we can mix the noise with the color ramp in a color mix RGB node. Let's use overlay as blend mode and let's use the color ramp's alpha values as factor. We set the white and black markers to alpha zero so that only the iris gets overlaid. We already see that the noise texture is aligned spherically. But if we add a mapping node from vector mapping, we can stretch our clouds along these angles. That would not be possible using the rectangular XYZ coordinates. 
So I hope we learned how to utilize geometrical properties like distance and angles in order to shade our objects. In the next video, we will have a look at how to distort our texture coordinates to come up with highly fluid dynamical effects. Happy blending. Bye.